And welcome everybody to another edition of the Smash Lights. I'm your host Dan, aka Smash O Mash, and we've, as always, here at the Smash News Network, got interesting stories, including how big tech has is in the process of building a massive ramp and purchasing a whale shark. Possibly for the largest shark jump in mankind's history. Anyway, big tech's day of reckoning approaches. Twitter jumps shark officially, and let's talk lobbying. Oh yeah, it's exciting. We'll also talk stupidity, ignorance, conspiracies, etc. Are we going to talk COVID? Not really. Let's talk about big tech fraud. Ted Cruz has been exposing some. Were you aware? Well, yesterday, we have seen big tech, we've seen Twitter and Facebook actively interfering in this. In the last two days, we've seen a remarkable development. We have seen big tech, we've seen Twitter and Facebook actively interfering in this. In this election. And what's happened is a request for the subpoena of Jack Dorsey has happened. There it is. It's on our Instagram page. If you don't follow us there, well, we're not even at 500 subs. We're also on Twitter. And Ted Cruz has been killing it on Twitter, if you weren't aware. Ted Cruz doing a fantastic job exposing the criminal behavior. Indeed, because these organizations are misleading their shareholders... So, by the way, if you head to twitter.com slash smashamash, you'll see a link to our Teespring store. Remember, if you purchase stuff from Teespring through Halloween, uh, through the rest of October, enter the promo code MANSA on checkout, and you'll save 10% on your order. We just actually saw one ship today. Tony Heller's killing it also, and we're retweeting his stuff. Even Joe Rogan has gotten involved, citing Big Tech's censorship Whoopsies. Dr. Fauci's been suggesting that we cancel Thanksgiving gatherings. And uh, here is a screenshot from Ted Cruz's tweet not sent when Twitter personally censored his post when he attempted to post a New York Post article, which is, I believe, the fourth largest print publication in the U.S. Let's talk cosmology for a brief segment. Today's cosmology segment is about an interesting series of objects, to say the least. It's Cygnus X3, yes. So here you've got a wolf rayet star. Here you've got a giant disk of ionized gas. And here you've got Cygnus X3, which has one of its poloidal field jets aimed directly at you, especially if you live in the Northern Hemisphere. It's moved into a quiescent state once again. It's ultra-quiescent right now. So, despite seeing very low levels of geomagnetism on Earth, we haven't really been seeing high cosmic ray flux, and coincidentally, actually it's not a coincidence at all, because this is one of the only known point sources for cosmic rays, massive X-ray binary Cygnus X3, and you can see it's in this quiescent state here, all the way down there on its historic X-ray flux graph. And so this thing is preparing to enter back into an active state again. It'll be interesting to see what the results of that are. If you want to follow that yourself, check it out at the Neil Gorel Swift Observatory. It'll show you the daily 4.79 hour periodicity of this interesting object. Now, the distance to this is disputed. Some sources claim it's 3,000 light years away. Some claim it's 37,000 light years away. And that's because you're living in the poloidal field jet of this object. There's a big section about it at smashamash.com slash forum. Smashamash.com slash forum, as well as our October contest. Join that, but especially go read about Deneb. As cosmic rays are becoming more and more important as people get concerned about climate without having any idea what they're talking about, cosmic rays are super important, and that's part of the reason why we regularly talk about them. We have a pinned post there. There's actually three in the Cosmology Forum. One for the most. You'll have to find out what that is yourself and one about Cygnus X3 Massive X-ray Binary Celestial Pole Star Deneb, the most intrinsically bright object visible in the Milky Way galaxy. And that's the end of our cosmology segment. Let's talk about more shark jumpers. 
as Miriam Webster has jumped onto the stage, jumping sharks. Now, during Amy Coney Barrett's confirmation hearings in the Senate, before the Senate Judiciary Committee, she used the term sexual preference, I guess at some point. I don't know if she actually used it during the hearings or if it was at a different time. Oh, look, they're defining the word fascism. Yeah, fascism. Well, fascism is what happens when a company changes a dictionary definition within one day of Senate Judiciary Committee people jumping the shark in the Senate, suggesting that the term sexual preference is offensive. So they've added the term offensive to the definition here at Merriam-Webster. Congratulations, Merriam-Webster. Your sexual preference may involve sharks, as you are involved in jumping them too. Let's look at largest.org's list of the 10 lobbying groups in the U.S. As I'm sure you'll find this interesting, you may wonder, who are the 10 largest? Well, we're going to go in order from 10th to number one, AT&T. Hmm, I wonder what their agenda is. Well, in any case, according to December 4th, 2019, they were spending like $19 million on lobbying. Now, I can't verify any of this. Again, this is all at largest.org. That is the source of the information. Next is the American Medical Association. Hmm, I wonder if it would be in their benefit for people to be worried about viruses all the time. Next is, hmm, Alphabet Inc. Did they have a political agenda? Do I seem to remember something about a large gathering at Google where they tried to, quote, prevent another Trump situation? Do you own Alphabet stock? Is that what you've invested in Alphabet stock for? Do you feel like you're being misled as a shareholder? Just putting the question out there. Next is Business Roundtable. That's number seven. I never heard of it. It's a bunch of CEOs, apparently. And, uh, yeah, who knows Who knows what their agenda is? And, again, it is in these organizations' rights to lobby. Next is Blue Cross Blue Shield. So kind of odd there, as it is a health insurer. Um, they're probably trying to get Obamacare repealed, since Obamacare, otherwise known as the Affordable Care Act, effectively repealed the concept of health insurance in the U.S., due to the pre-existing coverage mandate. American Hospital Association, hmm, I wonder if it's the, in their benefit to receive massive government funding because everybody's scared of a virus all the time, a very, very scary, spooky virus. The Pharmaceutical Research and Manufacturers of America. Are you noticing a pattern develop? Are you noticing some of the lies vanishing before your very eyes? Let's continue on the list. Hmm. Hmm. Open Society Policy Center. Yeah, so if you're worried about George Soros, it was the number three lobbyist in the U.S. as of December of last year. Number two, National Association of Realtors. Now, that might be a good one in that they may wish to have property taxes repealed. Shout out to all of you who own property who would like to stop paying rent to local municipalities to be utterly incompetent <laughs> and and force you to pay thousands of dollars per year to own a property that's already paid off via taxes. Yeah, it shouldn't be a thing. Trump talked about it, by the way, in his initial campaign in 2016, repealing all property taxes. And number one <laughs> is a government entity, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Gee, do you think there's a revolving door of money going on? Hmm. Hmm. Speaking of revolving doors of money, let me remind you again, if you order any of our products on Teespring, to enter the promo code MANSA, which stands for Make America Not Suck Again. And I've noticed since governors have been shutting down states and making all kinds of rules that are utterly unconstitutional, America has sucked. Follow us on Facebook if you haven't. It's facebook.com slash smashamash. I'm sure all your posts will totally be seen there. We're also on Minds. It's minds.com. We have a link to the Mansa product there also. And if you head to the smashamash.com or smashamash.org, you'll see that. Follow us on Twitter as well. Jeez, uh, we only have uh, 65 followers on Twitter. And we were making fun of Kathy Griffin because Kathy Griffin seems to think that Amy Coney Barrett is dumb. I've got ideas about this as well. 
How about U.S. Senators? Did you notice some dumb questions being asked? Who votes for these people, much less trust them to legislate? There are some deep thoughts courtesy today's Smash Light segment. Now, we do typically stream live to Twitch most days, and we are actually streaming this to Twitch. Shout out to our Twitch followers. If you didn't see yesterday's Daily Space Weather video, head to youtube.com slash smash mash. It was a YouTube exclusive live stream. If you enjoy the content on YouTube, press like and subscribe over there. Press the notification bell. Tell your friends and foes. Share on your social media. And I'm sure we won't be shadow banned. Yeah, it's totally, it's just in my imagination, folks. Thanks to our new subs over at BitChute also. There is exclusive content there as well. BitChute.com slash smash mash. And here ends today's Smash Light segment. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you soon with some more content. Shut up.